freelancing was really, really hard until I joined the No Pants Project and realized that I was doing it all wrong. This whole idea of being a commodity and racing toward the bottom, competing with other freelancers to see who can give the lowest prices to our, 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 uh, our clients is just the wrong way to go about it. And ever since I joined the No Pants Project, I realized that I do have value. I do. I should be in demand. Delisha Ivins here and I'm here on behalf of Mike Shreve and the No Pants Project and today uh, I have the super awesome amazing pleasure of chatting with Joshua Copeland who is joining us from Western Time. What, where are you at Joshua? I'm in San Diego, California. You're in San Diego! Oh that's so fun. I was just there not too long ago. Why are you wearing a sweater? It can't be cold there. Uh, you know what? I woke up this morning and it was actually freezing. It was, it was, it was, it was below 70 degrees. I, I don't know how I can deal with that. I, I don't know what that means. I don't, so I, I had to put on a sweater because I'm used to 90 degree plus weather. And... No, I feel you. I feel you. It's funny. I was just thinking because I'm in South Carolina and it's recently gotten cold here. Like I think they, a couple of nights ago, it was like under 30 or something, which is ridiculous. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, I was in California last winter. What am I doing? What yeah, no, I doing? you acclimate here pretty flat, uh, pretty fast. It's the, it's the palm trees and it's the, yep. it's the beaches. It's, you can't, you know, it's like, a, it's like a siren almost. You get in there and you're just like, oh, I don't want to go anywhere else. And then you go back home and you're like, what is this? I know. This white stuff hitting the ground from the sky. Snow, I don't know what this is. Where's my beaches? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Anything under 70, I'm about the same now. Anything under 70, I'm like, where's my hoodie? I need yeah. warm woolly socks on. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, people up in the Northeast are like, you people are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? No, we are so, we are so privileged here. <laughs> You're like, ah, you know. I know, it's nuts. <laughs> so tell me about the So tell me a little bit about your superpower. What is it that you do for your clients? Well, I help simplify their messaging to better connect with their consumers. And I use copywriting and storytelling to do so. Okay. And, okay. So that's cool. Um, is, is there like a type of customer that you like to work with or like a niche that you prefer to work with? So I just started working in the, well, I'm in the health space, but I just started like emerging in the cannabis and CBD oil industry. Nice. And that's really, really fun. Yeah, I was inspired to do that one because my uncle has MS and mm -hmm. it's kind of ruined his life in many ways. And so I believe that if we can find solutions to help people who struggle with that disease, that they can go back to living normal, happy lives. I also dated a girl with MS and it, it you know, it was just, a, it didn't work out because she was so insecure with a lot of things that she felt like the need to have to do things that it was just, it just wasn't, and, and she blamed it all on MS. And I feel like if it, yeah. MS, it kind of controls people and it kind of like makes people feel less than that. And, and any disease probably makes people feel that way, especially if it's something that you can't get rid of. So if so with CBD, well, seeing how it changes people's lives, transform, transforms people's lives for the better. If I can use my copywriting skills, if I can simplify the brand messages mm -hmm. to help people find the solution they need to live happy, normal lives, then I will have achieved my purpose in this world. That's awesome. Yeah, and elevating that too, because I think, um, you know, for a lot of consumers and stuff, they they kind of, uh, just, just based on past history, they have this association with CBD oil and things like that. So um, using copywriting and using skills to kind of get past those like previous um, like mental blocks and explain all the benefits and stuff that can be used for that health industry is, is really cool. Yeah. Um, So how are you enjoying freelancing so far? I know you've been at it for a little while now, haven't you? Yeah, no, freelancing was really, really hard until I joined the No Pants Project and realized that I was doing it all wrong. This whole idea of being a commodity and racing toward the bottom, competing with other freelancers to see who can give the lowest prices to our, our, uh, 
our clients. It's just the wrong way to go about it. And ever since I joined the No Pants Project, I realized that I do have value. I do, I should be in demand. My superpower is different than other people's. And since then, uh, I've been closing four figure projects. Recently finished my first $5,000 project with a client. Um, it was a sales letter and 10 emails. Uh, I am working on a client, uh, another client right now, paid me $2,800 for uh, 30 emails. And now uh, I'm working into getting him in a, uh, making him a retainer client to, to pay me that kind of money a month. Yeah. And it was, it was funny because of the no pants product. It was so funny. This dude was originally going to pay me $200 for 10 emails and then increase the dollar amount uh, by a hundred dollars per 10 emails. So I was like, okay, well, if, if you're, let's say if you're charging a hundred dollars an email, by the time he gets to your dollar amount, you will have written him over a hundred emails. Right. And he's like, yeah, you got to prove yourself to me. I was like, no, <laughs> no, I don't think so. That's not how it's going to work. This is what I charge. This is what I can do for you. But if the, if you don't want that, then I'm obviously not the copywriter for you. And you can find someone on Upwork that would be more than willing to increase your portfolio. And he was like, well, then I guess I'm not going to do it. I was like, okay, cool. And then he comes back. All right, fine. How about 30 for 2,800? I was like, I think I can you know, <laughs> make, him, make, him, make him work for it a little bit. Like, no, no. <laughs> I don't know who you it's think so you are. Funny. It jumped from like, from going from that offer to 30 for 2,800. Yeah, that final he makes two hundred thousand dollars, and you're like, yeah. What are you doing? Like, you're, and, and and it's crazy because before the No Plants project, we, I was falling for stuff like. I remember writing full out sales letters for just a hundred bucks just to get my experience going. Oh, you know goodness. what I mean? It was, it was horrible, you know, and, and it was because I didn't realize my value. I thought that I had to prove myself, but which in in most cases you do have to prove yourself because you're you know you're a freelancer and you have to stand out. But when you, when you rearrange your thinking into, into thinking like a superhero, that you are the one that saves them from their problems, relieve them of their pain, then it's a totally different concept of, I just need to make some money. Uh, I'm, scr- I'm, you know, I'm a starving artist. I'm, you know, I need to get out there and I need, to, it's, just, it's just a totally different mind, sh- mind sh- set shift thinking. And because of that, because I learned that in no pants, I've been able to uh, position myself for way higher fees than I would have ever thought possible, thanks to No Pants. So I, that, yeah, No Pants Project is really, really awesome. That's cool. So, yeah. what are some of the goals that you have with freelancing so far? Like, you know, you've kind of got some some base stuff set up. Like, what are you looking at? You know, your one year, five year kind of stuff. So, my one year. Uh, I want to be able to close at least three retainers by the by the end of the first quarter of next year. See, I'm mean, talking about quarters now. I've never, I would have never started talking like that if it wasn't for no pants. But anyway, yeah, by, by the first quarter, I want to at least close three to five um, retainers at at least two thousand dollars a month, and I want to be making uh, yeah two thousand dollars a month per retainer. So that's about you know, six to 8,000, 10,000, if I can get five, I want to be able to do that. I want to um, completely pay off student loans. You know what I mean? Um, And just be financially independent by the middle of next year. I think I can do it. I believe I can do it with copywriting, especially when you enter in a a niche like cannabis where it's it's still growing. Right. Uh, So with, uh, with no pants and like writing and emails, and I already love to write, uh, everything I've learned in No Pants, I if I leverage it the right way, then yeah, this it'll be no problem. I want a new car, you know. I have a lot of things that I want, but m- mainly it's uh, it's to uh, make six, start making six figures, and pay off all my debt. That's the right now, so that I can, you know, finally maneuver the way I want to maneuver, you know. Most definitely. Well, I think you're on track to get there. And I think looking at those, you know, that canvas niche, that's, that's a growing, I mean, Colorado, when we were just there, um, when my family and I, we drove through there. So we just like completed our RV tour for a year. Uh, when we drove through there, it was really great. I had some family there I'd never met before. And I was like, they lived in Denver. I was like, so how has this, you know, legalization affected the real estate market? 
He said, it's been crazy. He said his house has literally tripled in value. What was previously like a $200,000, $250,000 house is now worth over half a, you know, half a million because it's legalized in this one state. So it's crazy. Like it's a, it's a good, you know, good test niche to kind of get in on early. So that's pretty cool. Definitely. Um, definitely. So tell me a little bit about what life was like before you hit no pants. I know you said that you were kind of doing, were you doing some Upwork stuff or, you know, doing some of those pay to play kind of areas? <laughs> yeah. So uh, before Upwork, I mean, sorry, before no pants. Yeah, I was, I was definitely on Upwork. Uh, there was a situation where I, um, I was an intern at, um, at this marketing agency and I knew right away that I wanted to be a copywriter. I was fresh out of, out of college and I was an intern and I was, you know, I just, I don't know. I was like, man, I, I could do so much more than being an intern than being an errand boy and getting people's coffee and, and, and doing all these remedial projects that don't make it mean anything. Let me do, let me write copy. All I want to do is write copy. And so being naive, I had the, the great idea of, you know, I, we, we had this company event and, um, I was told to mingle with them and tell them what I do. And because I was so copyright, passionate about copywriting, still am, I was telling people that I was copywriter. So they started, you know, they're like, oh, so do you do work on the side? Now, I should have said no because I was working with the company, but I said yes because I wanted to prove. And they were like, okay, well, then let's, you know, let's, let's exchange uh, contact information. You can write for me. Now, I'm thinking, oh, if I can make my company's clients money, then they'll see how valuable I am. Mm -hmm. But in the real world, that's soliciting personal services to company clients. And uh, yeah, I got let go. It sucked. But uh, one of the last... Knowing, you know, like everybody makes early mistakes like that. You know what sucked about that situation was that uh, the guy, I, I felt wrong about it in the beginning, you know, because the dude asked me what, you know, how would I charge. And I went to the CEO and I was like, hey, this is going on. I don't really feel comfortable about it about it he's asking me for money what should i do he said well you should tell them that you're just an intern and that you can't do it otherwise um you could be jeopardizing your job so that's exactly what i did i was like oh okay i'm sorry sir i can't do it i'm just an intern he's like oh okay two weeks later they fired me for that exact same thing and i was like dude oh you know what i mean like and it was like you're not even a real copywriter and you're out here telling people that you're a copywriter and that was one of the last things he said to me and it, and it actually you know, I, I, he literally kicked me out the building. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, eyes are filled with tears. I'm so angry and I feel so betrayed. And I'm like, this will never, ever happen again. I'm going to prove him wrong. And then, uh, you know, uh, like I was talking to some friends of sulking and they were like, you know what you should do? You should go on Upwork. You can make your own money. You could do your own thing. You could show them. You can, you can make money for other clients and you could just increase your skills. So that's a great idea. So I hopped on there and, uh, yeah, man, I was so passionate and so determined to get five-star reviews, no matter what it took, that I ended up becoming, uh, uh, um, I ended up becoming 100, I had 100% job completion success rate, and then I became top rated in less than seven months. People get on there and they don't make a dime, right? And I was just like, no, this is it, I'm going to, I'm going to show them. But what I started to realize really quickly was that it, it was still spotty. You still had uh, flaky clients on there. You still had, you know, you, you were racing your, your fees to the bottom. I mean, you were, I mean, you could offer reasonable prices and people would be like, that's just out of my budget. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like a yeah. uh, thousand dollars for a sales letter. Oh, that's just way too much. I don't understand this. So I'm like, you want me to write you 20 pages for $300? Like, I don't understand, you know, and, you know, people, they really, they really get on there and they, they command these, you know, they they offer these these prices, these these fees, and it's just like whatever. And then, you know, you get on there and you just do it because you want to make money. And what you don't, what I don't realize, which I didn't realize before, was that uh, you know you're shooting yourself in the foot doing that. And so, because the money wasn't there, I you know I would get part time jobs. I would. I would, uh, you know, work at jobs I didn't want to be at. Part, you know, like I was at T-Mobile for a while, and I would thought that it'd be great to learn sales and then like turn around and, and 
but it just it just wasn't what I wanted to do. I, I wasn't I wasn't living the laptop lifestyle that I wanted because in an essence I was still working for other people with the illusion that you're a freelancer and that you're living your own life and you're doing all those things. If you don't have the money and you don't have the time, then you don't really have freedom. You have an idea of freedom. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what Upwork kind of is like, yeah, you could be a, a, a freelancer, you can make all the money, but oh, by the way, we take 20% out of your out of your fees and, <clears throat> and you get paid on a two week schedule, you know, kind of like a job, but not really like a job. And you know, and it's just like, no, no, I want, this is what I want, this is what I command, this is what I can do for people, you know? You know what you just said? I was actually writing it down because it was so good. And you're saying if you don't have the money and you don't have the time, you don't really have freedom. You just have the illusion of freedom, which I think is pretty, pretty spot on. So, I mean, you had like a lot of struggles. Like you were working part-time jobs. You were trying to do upwork on the side. You're trying to build this portfolio. You're trying to build this recognition. You're trying to to pull all that together. Um, Did you since you had like this kind of this journey before you found MPP, by the time you hit no pants running, like, did you already kind of know your superpower going? You're like, no, I got this. I know I can do copy. I'm going to be a copywriter. I'm going to do, you know, like, like how did you pull all that together? Well, I knew I loved copy. (laughs) Like that's definitely one thing. Um, I did not know what kind of copy I was really good at because I was so used to writing for a broad, um, span of niches that I had no idea like what I was really good at. I knew that I just knew that I liked to write and so I was writing for all sorts of stuff. I've written for all sorts of niches and I didn't realize that if you just find a funnel down into one niche that you can actually uh, increase your increase your profits because you'll be an expert as opposed to being like a general like um, an orthodontist makes me way more money than a general practitioner of dentistry. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if I go, if I have, if I need heart surgery, I want to go to a heart surgeon, not the general dentist. I mean, the general uh, doctor, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like I want the, I want the real thing. And I didn't realize at the time that that's what clients want too. So with no pants, I was able to kind of funnel down. Mike Shreve actually, he actually in the no pants in the uh, group, he actually can, he actually talks to you sometimes and uh you know that despite he's super busy which i'm super duper grateful for him to come out of his way and be like hey josh by the way you should be in the health space uh you know <laughs> and so i was like oh you know i think about it and i used and another thing that i love to write about is nutrition so nutrition cannabis uh what i didn't realize that he kind of helped me realize this is that the health space is what i've always written for supplements um but I, supplements, you know, um, nutrition, fat blockers, you know, all this. what I didn't want to do, though, is I, I didn't want to be like every other copywriter. So the, the whole superpower concept allowed me to differentiate myself uh, from all the vast majority of copywriters out there who think they know how to write but really don't versus the experts versus like, a satur- like entering into a saturated niche and trying to and it was almost like being in a saturated niche where everybody is this fitness copywriter it you might as well just go back on upwork because you're still having a race to the bottom anyway mm-hmm. and learning my superpower i was able to be like yeah okay yeah that's them and i i do that too but here's what i really do here's how i'm different here's how i'm better <laughs> you know what i mean here's how i you know how i separate myself from the rest and because of that i've been able to to uh, make strides in my in my copywriting career like people are like okay so you're actually this kind of copywriter all right cool i'm gonna do this and i couldn't do that without no pants could not do that without no pants (laughs) so uh tell me since you started working the no pants project like how many clients have you helped so far oh man (laughs) oh geez ah there's so many clients dude i um off a ton of clients um okay are we talking about like one-off clients or are we talking about like people who i have still working with today well i mean either or i guess i guess i'm just thinking like for people who are watching this and they're you know struggling to get clients and they're trying to figure out how to get clients like how realistic is you know is it for them once they go through the training like to get clients like one-offs or 
or, you know, repeat work type clients? I mean, you get a lot of one-off works because, you know, you have people who kind of just like, you know, well, you know, I just need you for this one thing. But the cool thing about it is that you, you just take that and you build it, you get a testimonial from them and you build your portfolio with it. And the really cool thing about the No Pants Project is that people enter the No Pants with like, you know, some people like I did, I, I entered it of uh, guns blazing. I'm going to make this work. I don't have no money or anything like that, but I'm going to you know, put what I have. And then you have the other people who are like, okay, well, how am I going to complete the No Pants Project with no sources of income? How am I going to make this work in the meantime, right? And what's cool about the No Pants is that Mike actually offers a fast getting client um, regimen that will get you clients so freaking fast, it's ridiculous. Um, and he teaches you how to, how to you know, uh, extract clients from social media sites like Upwork, LinkedIn, I'm sorry, not Upwork, sorry, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Mm -hmm. um you know these really big sites and thanks to mike's fast getting client faucet i was able to find uh some of my biggest clients and on, on top of that you still have people who reach out to you because he teaches you how to like you know format your portfolio the right way your your um he teaches you how to uh you know make your profile on linkedin so desirable that people come to you and are like, okay, so actually I do need copywriting services. I've, I've been asked to do emails. I've been asked to, uh, uh, you know, write advertorial sales letters. I've been asked to do so many things from people coming to me asking for help. Thanks to Mike's fast getting client. Awesome. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. The fast client getting workshop is super awesome. And um, it is like, you can actually get it as a separate workshop by itself. Uh, but for those who purchase the No Pants Project, it is included with the No Pants Project, which is really cool. Um, and the LinkedIn, like they just locked, or they just dropped, for those of you who are watching, it's really cool. If you actually go to the No Pants blog, um, Mike does have some templates in the No Pants training, but there's a new blog post too on building a super awesome, amazing LinkedIn mm -hmm. uh, in the No Pants blog, which is free. Just go and grab it and take that value and start building your, you know, your freelance lifestyle too. Um, because that is a fantastic piece. It is really great. Um, yeah. Tell me about your high points. Like, you know, you were struggling to get clients. You started going through no pants and then you got your first real win. What was that like for you? So the first real win was, I mean, <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was tempted to blow all of my money on celebrating. That's how excited I was. I was like, I'm in San Diego. Gas life is right down the street. I'm going to celebrate because I finally like get a project. And, and, you know, <laughs> uh, it was, it was, it was, it was amazing because it's just, I've never seen that kind of money before writing copy. You know, I, you know, after working for Upwork for so long, it's like, well, maybe all I, maybe all I'm, good for is just a hundred dollars here or two hundred dollars there and mike teaches you no we're good for ten thousand dollars here and twenty thousand dollars there mm -hmm. and so when i finally got you know i, I landed my first five thousand dollar project it was like wow this really is a, this really is a thing this really is possible i really can live the laptop lifestyle i really can have clients coming to me and i can really can be a superhero mm -hmm. you know i really can make a difference and i really can transform my life to the life that I want to live. And I really can live a life where I don't have to be bound by uh, a corporate ladder or living with, with a nine to five job for 40 years of my life until they, until they terminate me or replace me with somebody else. I really can live a life where I am accessible to my friends, my family, and everything that I want to do while you know fitting my work schedule in wherever I want to. You know, it's just, it's just an amazing, like, concept. I have friends right now that's like, I think that is so cool. That when I was, you know, I started writing on copy, they were like, oh, you should get a job, you should get this. Now they're saying things like, wow, I think that is so awesome that you work from your laptop. Oh, you're so lucky. Oh, I wish all I had to do was write from my laptop. And it's like, oh, yeah, that now I'm lucky. Before it was like, you need to stop being lazy and get a job. Well, now it's like, oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, I, like the other day, uh, my freaking family, I never thought I'd ask Josh for money. You know, before that, they were talk, they were making fun of me of how broke I was. Now, now they're asking me for money. I'm like, mm. no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you can enjoy it a little bit. You can. I, oh yeah, I mean, no, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that to my family. But at the same time, it's like, wow, what a, what a, what a, what a switch. What a, what a change in events. And it's all thanks to you know, no, you know, no pants. It's all thanks to this laptop that I'm talking to you on. It's, it's just. Well, it's just, that, and then you. I mean, you like, like legit you put in a lot of work which i think shows now i mean you it's so cool um yeah like i always say like one of my favorite things about you know being in the no pants community and in the facebook group is that i get to see people who are coming in from start and i get to see them work through the lessons and have their breakthroughs and have their struggles and try to help um and then and then what's amazing is like seeing somebody all of a sudden like they get it, like it clicks, it goes off, the work yeah. starts coming, and then you're just like, yes, 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 yes. Like it's so, because you know, you can see, like you can see, like yes, the lessons are all laid out for you, and yeah, they're, you know, they're formatted, they're easy to understand, you can go through them, but there's, there's a lot of emotional, like you have to get through stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like, just skills building and stuff like that. So it does take, you know, uh, like determination and attitude of I'm going to do this and an attitude of persistence and of grit um, to get anything that you really want in life. And you really wanted it and you yeah. got it. And that's awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm not where I want to be yet. Right. I'm always, I'm, I am a student forever in copywriting and in like my business and helping other people. I know that there are, there's more that I can learn and I'm not going to stop learning. Uh, I think self-education is always going to be uh, a priority in, in, when it comes. My goal is to be one of the top, if not the top, copywriter in San Diego. So, you know, in the, in, in the cannabis niche, it's doable, right? Yeah. And it's funny because, because the, no, oh, let me cut you off. Um, the No Pants Project, it went from like, oh, I love to write to, okay, how, how can I make money off of this? Like, how can I really, really like, sustain myself with copy? And and no pants will teach you how to do just that. <laughs> so that's really cool, man. And yeah, I'm definitely with you. Like always be a student, always learn more because you're going to continually benefit yourself and also your clients. Um, which is another cool thing because as you add expertise, you can also increase your fees, which is great. And that'll get you where you want to get a lot closer to. Um, yeah. So tell me for copywriting, uh, you know, that's like your, your master niche or not your niche, but your master superpower. Um, what would be like three tips that you could offer someone right now on how to like increase their copy? Now, whether they're a copywriter and they're copywriting for clients, or maybe they just want to like get better at writing copy for their LinkedIn or better at writing copy for their website. Like what would be some really cool, like, okay, here are some takeaways of some stuff you can do like right now to get better at this, like just to help you get to the next phase. Uh, that's a great question. Um, first thing I do is I go over your entire piece of copy and I would shrink the sentences as short as possible. Okay. Making your, I mean, shrink it down to a fourth grade level. And um, because the easier it is to read, the easier it is to consume the message, the easier it is, the quicker it is to get to the call to action. Um, a tool that I like to use, and I, I think every copywriter should use this, is the Hemingway app. Uh, it's for free. You can actually take uh, your piece of copy and throw it in this Hemingway app. And it's just, it's, you know, you just throw it in there. And it literally breaks it down like Ernest Hemingway would break down his stories. Um, his, his books, his novels, his novels are so easy to read. And you can now do the same thing too. The goal is to get it down to fourth grade reading level. Once it's a fourth grade reading, reading level, it's accessible to anybody and everyone to read. And if anyone and everyone can read your copy, then you'll increase your sales. It's almost like the second nature. Mm -hmm. uh, another, mm -hmm. tip, another tip I'd give uh, for copywriting is um, I would format, I would format my copy to answer 
the uh, the four questions, which is, uh, what is the who do I who am I talking to? What am I? What do I want to say? Why it does it is it important to you? And how can you get involved? Or how does it how does it make your life better? Or, or how this? And then I put a CTA in there. So who, what, why, and how? Those are how I set up my emails my advertorials and what these four questions allow you to do is allows to, it allows you to encompass um, the entirety of the offer the message anything you want to talk about and um, you know it, it, it just it it almost is like a, it almost even, it even answers questions for the, the customer so it's like okay okay well why is this important to me boom you know uh, why what can it do boom Oh, uh, okay. Well, how can I use boom? Okay. Well, how can I get started at CTA? You know what I mean? It's just like a, it's like a, a gradual grad. It's like you're taking them by the hand to the CTA and they don't even realize it. And another uh, tip I'd give is, uh, let's see, what else would I give? Um, hmm. What's another tip I'd give? Um, another tip I'd give is I would pick something, I would pick like like a specialty and I would get really, really good at it and then kind of just like, you know, start from there. So my whole thing is sales letters. I love sales letters, right? And so I decided to get really, really good at sales letters. And through that, I was able to kind of like take what I've learned from writing sales letters and then kind of just funnel it to email, advertorials, this and that because once you have like a blueprint of what you like to write like for example with my copy like if i'm doing a sales letter then i can kind of take some of the same elements and throw them in an email mm -hmm. which uh, which is which it, it it works you know um so if you take like this so if you're like okay well if i start with email then when i write something like a sales letter i can use the concept of brevity in the sales letter like i would an email Mm -hmm. Or if it's like, okay, well, if I like writing advertorials, then I could take the concept of being informative and, um, you know, putting 70% of value as opposed to the, the selling of 30%. I can use that same concept um, and inform people in like uh, eBooks or uh, uh, sales letters or copy or VSLs or whatever the case. So those are my three tips. One, make sure you're writing at a fourth grade level, shorten your sentences super, super, dead, uh, super, mm -hmm. super tight so that you can get the message across. Um, clarify your message with the who, what, why, and how. And three, focus on being really, really good at something and then use the lessons that you learn from that and um, transfer it to everything else. That's pretty cool. So you uh, you like to focus on like the long sales copy and then you can transfer that to short pieces? Yeah, because I mean, if you think about it, if you can write a long form sales letter, then you can write a short form sales letter. You can yeah. write an email. You can use the concept of a sales letter to write ebooks. You can use the concept of sales letters to write advertorials and native ads. Um, you can write VSLs, uh, VSL scripts. Um, you can even write webinars. You know, you can do all sorts of things with this I, with the concept of copy. And I think it all starts with the original ad, which is the sales letter. So, yeah, like I love sales letters. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Who is your uh like top sales letter hero like the the person you like to read all their books or read all their blogs do you have like a favorite inspirational person that you like to go to to kind of just study up on i think gary halpert is pretty dope like i think he's amazing i also like john carlton but gary halpert he's like the the greatest of all time really um the way he writes copy the bore on letters he really He's able to break break it down to his son in such a conversational tone that you can't help but absorb the information that he's giving to his son into your own copy. Mm -hmm. um, when you can write in a way that you don't even realize you're being sold to, that is just that's when you've won. You know, people don't even know that they're being sold to. They're just reading something. You're just like, wow, that's so yeah. I wish I had that. Oh, I can get it here. Yeah, cool. Wait, I just get yeah, like yeah, you just got sold too. Like that's the kind of writing <laughs> that's the kind of writing that I think is amazing. Right. And I and I and I, I 
I strive to uh, emulate that. I strive to emulate that in my copy. I want to write something. And whenever I write copy, I want to write it so good that they don't even realize they're being sold to. And uh, Gary Halbert mastered that. Uh, any Anybody who can write in a conversational tone that's so conversational, it's almost like, it's so it's so engaging to read because of just how you're you're talking to somebody. I think is is awesome. I think is amazing. And when when uh, a pe reading a piece of writing is so engaging when it's really just meant to sell, but it's still super engaging at the same time. Mm -hmm. Gary Halbert is that guy, man. <laughs> Gary Halbert is that dude. Very awesome. That's cool. It'll be a cool resource that uh, some other people can look up to. Yeah, so the Boron, the Boron letters, straight up. Everybody should read the Boron letters. Just saying. So. <laughs> I'm going to add that to my sticky notes. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Josh's corner of wisdom. What would you say? Like, this is your, your, like, you know, your space to be like, Hey, listen, if you want to, um, you know, get out of the grind or, you know, get out of feeling like, all the opportunity is way over here and you're stuck over here and there's this forest between you and you're like, how do I get there? Like what would be some cool words of wisdom that you could offer to some people, you know, who are, you know, struggling to break free of some mindsets and things like that, that might be holding them back. Okay. Uh, it, what's going on everybody. So uh, words of wisdom, you have now reached crossroad. Okay. On one path, you have the path where you continue doing it on your own. You continue having to learn things on your own. You keep falling for the same pit stops and falls that were easily avoidable if you had some guidance. And you keep getting um, screwed and taken advantage of by people who clearly don't see the value in you. And at the at the end of the day, you'll have nothing to show for it. And you'll have a harder time, if not in, uh, an impossible time, reaching the life that you actually do deserve, that your friends and family do deserve. Or you could choose the one path, the other path. And the other path is that you have somebody, you have a program filled with people who are on the same mission as you are, along with the people who have actually made it um, to the life that they want to live. And it's easy and it's doable. It's fast. You have the best help ever, like the no pants. If you get involved with no pants, then your dream, your, your desire to live life on your own terms is literally just around the corner. You have people like Delicia, you have people like Deb Law, you have people like Michael B. Shreve and Peter. Uh, you have all these people in here who know exactly how to get to where you want to go because they've done it already 10 times over. And with their help, you'll get to where you want to go faster than you've ever thought possible. You'll make more money than you've ever thought possible. And all you have to do is just do exactly what they say. So if you really want to get somewhere in life, you really want to make this freelancing thing work, you want to take your passion and make it your money maker. And I suggest, really, really, really strongly encourage you to join the No Pants Project because you'll be super duper happy that you did. Aww. That's super awesome. You know, I was just thinking earlier, which is totally off topic, because I know we started we started this meeting late because we realized that you thought it was Pacific yeah. time and I'm on Eastern and it's your birthday. So I was like, we could totally reschedule. Like it's your birthday. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> it is my birthday, but it's no excuse. You know, I, I should have been. <laughs> but I was just thinking like you totally chanted up and joined. But while, while I was like giving you a couple of minutes to get some coffee and stuff, I was playing in the bedroom with my little girl who um, is three and she's been wanting me to play stuffed animal pet store like all morning. So that's what we're, we were playing stuffed animal pet store. And I was, it occurred to me in my mind, like as I was sitting there, um, you know, before I started freelancing, I was like, okay, um, today would have been a work day. I would have been making $15 an hour. So it would take me about seven hours to make what I can make in one hour now. Wow. Like, like I just being able to freelance, I just, got six hours back with my kids just from one thing, just from being able to do one thing. Like, like yeah. that gift of time is so valuable, you know, it, they're, they're going to grow up. They're going to get that, big. That is so, that, that is so interesting that you brought that up. I, you know, and you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll just tell it. Um, I was actually going through a, a, a serious financial situation uh, in just in September and I was like, well, maybe I should get a job. It's the holidays. 
you know, give me a little part-time job. Mind you, you know, I have a degree, so I'm already like kind of, ah, I gotta get this part-time retail. I get the part-time retail job. I was working at uh, Zara's. It's actually a really nice store. People are really cool. Uh, but the hours are all crazy. As soon as I got the job at Zara's, I landed the $5,000 project. And so, you know, you're working with these clients that are paying you a lot of money. Uh, so you have deadlines. And I, I eventually I reached a deadline where I was like, okay, I'm working so much because I'm trying to put food on the table. And it got to the point where I was like, oh, hey, I need to come up with the first draft of this, this giant sales letter I just wrote um, so that I can pot potentially make him a, like a, you know, continuing client. And I remember being like, okay, I got to get this done versus my one to five, one to nine PM shift at, at Zara's. And I thought about it and I was like, okay, $11 an hour here. That's the, that's the uh, you know, that's the, yeah. that's the minimum wage. It's like, I could make that in an email between 30 to 15 to 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I have to work eight hours at a job that I don't really, that I'm not really into, you know, for what? And it was like, all right, Josh, either you could decide to, uh, you can either decide to work this job for $11 an hour and make your little $88 before taxes, by the way, mm -hmm. or you can continue working on this $5,000 project, crush it and potentially earn a long-term customer paying you a ton of money. Most definitely. Yeah. And I mean, just, I don't know. I've been like in the space here recently um, where I'm just realizing that, you know, I mean, I still look beautiful and young, but at some point, of course you do, I'm yes. Aging, and you know, life is gonna. We we get this one bit of time, right? We get this one bit of time to spend with our family and our friends and to enjoy life. And why would I want to trade that for you know eleven, fifteen dollars an hour? Not saying you know there's anything wrong with that, but I mean, just if I can do the work and if I'm motivated, if I'm willing to put in the work, I don't want to trade that time for that because I'm never going to get that time back. You don't deserve I, uh, my brother, he works at a bank and he says, you know, like, like money's a thing. Like they print more of it every day. It's just a thing. <laughs> what is that like though, to be at a bank where you, where you have all, you're just around all this money and you only get paid this much of it. You know what I mean? Like it's just, crazy. it would drive me crazy. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> my husband said one thing. I know we got to wrap up. My husband said something one time. He's like the craziest thing in the world. And he said the thing that I hated the most was when you would work management at retail and you would go to the bank and you would go to deposit these big fat stacks of cash and you worked all day there and you would know you're only going to get like 80 to a hundred bucks of that. And you're depositing like hundreds of thousand dollars. He's like, it, especially like at Christmas time, you know, fourth quarter retail. It's crazy. And he's like, mm -mm. Like the worst thing in the world is taking a lot of <laughs> like knowing you worked all day and you made all this money. <laughs> you're just going to get taken. Right. And then the worst part about it is that you're working around these people and they all have the same conversation. Oh man. Oh, I got I got to work, man. Luckily, I hope I get my hundred dollar raise or a hundred dollar bonus check at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Oh dude. I got to like skip out on family dinner because I have to work this black Friday shift where people are, by the way, the rudest they've ever been over things that they could just buy if they just chilled or if they just, you know, like, ah, like it's just bad. I story for another time. I got stabbed by a pencil one time over a kid's toy on a black Friday special dude straight up, like hit me with a pen. Isn't that crazy? They're crazy. That's awful. <laughs> That's nuts. All right, Josh, it's your birthday, man. You need to go party, go do your fun stuff, go enjoy cupcakes for breakfast, whatever it is you do on your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that actually sounds like a great idea. I might just do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can write about it for the health and fitness niche later, you know, right? You can do all that. You can just, just wash it out. Like, I think writing <laughs> counts as calorie burn. <laughs> Hell yeah. No, that, calories don't count on your birthday. You know what I mean? No. Well, hey, no. There's like know? at least three days, like your birthday, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Those yeah. three. You can't, yeah. I mean, you have to be. It, it, on top of that, you're not even cool if you try to stick to a diet on Thanksgiving. Like, who are you? Like, you think you're better than us? No. <laughs> <laughs> I wore my stretchy pants for a reason. No. You don't get yeah. it good. Uh-uh. Get, get rid of that green juice and take this turkey leg. <laughs> Make me mad. 
<laughs> hey, thank you so much for hanging out with me this morning. And I hope to see you in the you know, Pants Facebook group later because you always bring such great value and you're so encouraging. So thanks for, for keeping up with that and for being a part of that and helping encourage, you know, even some of the newer students and stuff. It's so awesome to, uh, to have you drop in when you do that and, and boost everybody up. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you for just thank you for, you know, having me and, you know, being patient with me on my journey. And, you know, to everybody, all the no pants, uh, you know, officials watching this, especially Mike Shreve, you guys have changed my life for the better. And it's only going to get better from here. So I'll definitely be in the Facebook group to, to share more of my you know successes with everything I do. And it's more encouragement to continue to do what I do so that I can help inspire more people. And if anybody wants help, like with copy, or if they need, you know, they need like advice or whatever, or just to kind of like, you know, like pointers, you know, just hit me up. I, I got you. No pants all day, you know. Aw, that's super sweet. You're awesome. <laughs> all right. Oh, that's your birthday alarm. That's my birthday alarm, yeah. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Thanks again. Thank you. <laughs>